I'm in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. I've come here to meet Brazilian chemists and to go to a conference. But I've been really struck by something which I wanted to share with you. Brazil is very famous across the world for the use of bioethanol. This is ethanol that is made by fermenting sugar to use as a fuel for cars. Behind me is a gas station which is selling ethanol as a car fuel. Not pure ethanol, but ethanol with only a small percentage of gasoline added to it. I had a vision and I had been told that most cars in Brazil use ethanol as a fuel. The argument is that sugarcane makes sugar with CO2 from the atmosphere and sunlight. So when you ferment the sugar and make ethanol, when you burn the ethanol in your car engine, the CO2 just goes back to the atmosphere, so you don't add any CO2 to the atmosphere. Whereas if you burn ordinary gasoline, you're taking oil from under the ground and burning it and putting extra CO2 in the atmosphere. Everybody holds up Brazil as a great example to the world on how you should be using biofuels to fuel your cars. But, and now this is where the big surprise came. I already knew that ethanol was not as good a fuel as gasoline. You don't get so many kilometers per litre or miles per gallon when you burn ethanol because it doesn't contain so much carbon in a litre as you do with gasoline. But what I didn't realise is because the price of sugar is quite high, ethanol has a price which is very similar to that of gasoline itself. If you look at the notice outside the garage, there isn't much difference in the price at all. A few years ago, cars in Brazil would run either on ethanol or on gasoline. So if you had an ethanol car, you had to buy ethanol. In the last few years, new engines have been developed. They call them flex engines, which can run either on gasoline or on ethanol. So when you go into the gas station, you look at the price and decide, is it better to buy gasoline or ethanol? And apparently at the moment, although the gas stations are selling ethanol, people are buying more and more gasoline because they think it's more cost effective. Their money goes further, they get more miles for their real, for their unit of money. So I was completely surprised. I had a vision of all these cars fueled by ethanol. But in fact, they're mostly running on gasoline. So I think the message from this is that ethanol works really well. But if you're going to introduce new fuels, you need to think about people's behavior as well as just the science behind it. And in the end, wherever people are, all over the world, they're always going to try and get the best value for their money. And so if new fuels aren't as good or better from the point of view of money, people are not going to use them as much as they should. The problem for all of this, and why the price comes into it, is because sugar can also be used for food. And when sugar is in demand and the price is high, then the ethanol is also has a high price. What we need are so-called second generation ethanol, which is made not from the sugar, but from the cellulose, the other parts of the plant, which at the moment can't be used for anything except to be burnt or used for compost. If we can begin to start turning cellulose into ethanol, then there will not be the conflict between food and fuel, and the price should be considerably lower. You don't have to use sugar. You can use all sorts of different grains. In America, they use maize, sweet corn, for making um, ethanol. And that, from the food point of view, is even worse, because before ethanol production started, 
nearly all of the corn harvest was used for food and now much of it has been diverted for using for biofuels. But in the end, we have no choice. Oil is going to run out. I'm not sure when, but at some stage we're going to need to use fuels made from biomass.